um, maybe we should talk about that, the Joan Anderson letter and what's going on. I think one, uh, it's still legally kind of a mess. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing I like to say about it is that um, it was the Cassidy's letter, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> Neil wrote it. Her dad, who she lived with for a period of time and loved him along with her sister, her mother, and her brother, you know, they loved their dad a lot. And that letter was important through the years. And uh, all it was lost, supposedly blown into the bay. Um, and then it was found. And uh, it just seems weird to me that everybody knew who wrote the letter. John Bryan had written an article saying it was exactly what it was. Everybody knew what Kerouac said about it. And uh, still, we had to split the letter with Spinoza and the Kerouac estate. It's just weird, that's all I want to say about it. So. Oh. Oh, we do own the copyright, yeah, and we do have it. We here. have a yeah. copy. Okay, <laughs> we definitely want to publish it as soon as possible. We're working on that because it is a huge piece of literature, and uh, we don't call it the Joan Anderson letter. The Cassidy family calls it the manuscript because it is a work of literature. It's not a letter, you know. And uh, anyway, so we're working on that to get it out to the public as soon as we possibly can. So that's that. So Mike, oh my God, thank you, dear, for coming, for one thing, and uh, being a part of this. And uh, he taught me a lot just in this last little speech that I didn't know. So thank you very much for that. And it's been a long haul, but um, anyway, let's move on to other stuff, I guess. Um, yesterday was Dad's birthday, and uh, we've been coming here for nine years. My husband thought of this a long time ago. Why isn't anything happening in Denver? You know, it's always San Francisco. Um, and so, with the help of Mark Bleesner, of course, and uh, Marilyn here at the, you know, Mercury, which is so great, uh, we've been doing this for nine years now, and they get an excellent, excellent <laughs> bunch of uh, talented people to help us with this, and I'm just so pleased you all came. Um, <clears throat> my father was uh, very complicated, of course. Uh, I knew him for 10 years as just a father. He went. He worked on the Southern Pacific uh, for 10 years, never missed a day. He was actually uh, elected by the Southern Pacific bigwigs to work on the train that brought uh, Dwight Eisenhower down to Watsonville because he had such a great, you know, thing with the Southern Pacific. Um, then, being himself, he was so kind and generous to give two men uh, two joints because they, he said, I, I need a ride to work, and uh, here, here's two joints. Well, they were narcotic agents, and they wanted him off the streets because he could identify them. So he was um, sentenced to five years to life in San Quentin. Uh, I was eight years old when he went in. Uh, he got out in two years, though. <laughs> Good behavior. And, and uh, so I was 10 when he came out. Now, the whole time all this was happening, On the Road was published. You know, Ginsburg was huge with Howell and all that. Uh, myself and my older sister and younger brother had no idea who these people were, who Dad was, uh, Jack. You know, they were came over and spent the night and had dinner. I mean, we, it was like that. So um, I have that wonderful memory of him, you know, for all those years as being my father. Um, <clears throat> after that, my mom gave him a divorce in 1964. She thought she could free him from being tied down by the family. And that's when he was homeless. He continued to take super amounts of medication. 
He never had another house. Uh, the dead and the pranksters, Ken and everybody, housed him and fed him and helped him. And it was just an amazing friendship and that there. Uh, and then he died four years later. Um, <clears throat> my husband and I met on February 8th, 1972, on my father's birthday. And we got married on my dad's birthday in 1975. And yesterday we celebrated our 43rd wedding anniversary. <laughs> so he's my soulmate, my manager, all that junk. We have a lot of fun. So um, what I thought I'd read tonight, uh, <clears throat> I found my mother passed in 2013 in England, and Randy and I went there, shipped every single piece of paper, she was like a hoarder, <laughs> of correspondence and paintings and journals and poetry and everything that she had done during her 90 years back to our home in California. So we have all of her stuff, and luckily she was a good pack rat, and we're finding things constantly that are just amazing. Um, and I found two poems. Uh, one was written by my father <clears throat> to my mom in 1951. They were married on April Fool's Day, which I always thought was quite amazing, um, in 1948. And then we found this poem that she wrote April 1st to him, of course he had passed, in 1984. So I thought I'd read these two poems. If I can, I'm not a good reader or a poet. <laughs> but it kind of gives you the love and the friendship and the funny, wonderful, intelligent times they had together. Excuse me. <clears throat> okay, so this is Dad's. Written 1951, <clears throat> to my April Fool's magnificent ass, so beauteous, though over full, as is your heart with misery. I here make present a silver of cut stained glass, which unable to shave your behind's blubber, might yet pierce your receiver of hurt enough to make our third anniversary a day of insight crystal clear, combined with knowledge through the ear, so that when this Sabbath sun descends, there'll be an understanding which portends henceforth a bliss that never ends, but shows up for joke the fear that dread nar neurotic minds hold dear, and do pretend to suffer unjust trial, to all the while make careful file of everybody's dreary food, on which they feed of selfish axed, acts, only to find it does no good. For us, since never has been forgot the packs made three years ago this day, when each to the other did say, those eternal vows that cost 10 bucks to get from my legal, oh shucks, no paper. <laughs> He's funny. <laughs> Has a way with words, don't you think? Okay, so she wrote this in her home by herself in England, uh, April 1st, 1984. She'd been in England about three or four years, I guess. <clears throat> Snow cross-hatching my English garden, bright with yellow, pink, and purple spring. Thirty-six years ago today, two April fools ran down the sunny San Francisco courthouse steps, <laughs> laughing, loving, scattering pigeons in the square. Quote, I'll buy your, I'll buy your wedding lunch, he said. He turned water into wine. I'll turn beer into champagne forever. I can see us now, he said, at 80, rocking side by side as one. No need for speech. 
20 long, short years, one life left over, 16 more, death did not us part. You let me down, now let me go, now let us go. That was my mom to him. Thank you. So I would love, of course, to thank this wonderful crowd and having everybody here, the ninth year, and Mark and uh, Marilyn at the Mercury and all our new friends that are such great writers and my, my new brother over there. Very cool. And uh, it's just been a fabulous, fabulous time to come here every year and celebrate my dad. So thank you very, very much. Yeah.